Hey, it's Kay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the dots and dashes cowl. Check the link in the description box to get the pattern for the matching dots and dashes slouchy hat. So this cowl is kind of inspired by the dash dot dash um, September 2018 knit crate theme. This is the yarn from that crate. This is um, Vita Lana Dream, and um, this is a sport weight yarn. Definitely not going to use all of this, but I have 200 grams here, which is about 660 yards or close to that. I've got scissors, yarn needle, a measuring tape or ruler to measure your gauge, and I've got a size H or 5 millimeter crochet hook. This is a furls. The complete supplies and materials list with the exact amount of yarn required and everything there is going to be in the free written pattern. You will find the link to the free written pattern in the description box below. Or if you would rather, you can purchase a large print ad free printable PDF of the pattern in my Ravelry store. So as always, you're going to need to use the size crochet hook that will give you the correct gauge. The gauge and all the information for that is listed in the written pattern. So this cowl is going to start with a ribbing across the bottom. So what we're gonna do is work a crochet ribbing by working in the back loops only. And we're going to make a little strip that is the entire length that we want our circumference of the cowl to be in our um, back loop only stitches and that will make our stretchy ribbing. So to start making our ribbing, we're gonna leave a good six to eight inch tail because we're going to need this tail later. So I'm gonna leave about eight inches and then we're going to start crocheting with that eight inch tail. So we're gonna start by chaining eight. We're gonna skip that first chain next to the hook and single crochet into the second one and in each chain across for a total of seven single crochets. And this, um, this ribbing part is not going to count the chain that we skipped at the beginning of the row as a stitch. We're going to ignore it as if it wasn't there. So here we are, here's my last chain. And when we count the stitches in that row, we are not going to count that chain that we skipped. That's not going to count as a stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches in our row here. So now we're gonna chain one and turn. We're gonna work a regular single crochet in the same stitch, this stitch right here that our chain is coming out of. And the reason for that is because we don't want the edge to be so incredibly stretchy that it just stretches all out of shape and doesn't have any any structure to it. So we're going to work a regular single crochet in the first stitch, which is the same stitch that our chain was coming out of because we're not counting that chain as a stitch. So then we're going to work a single crochet in the back loop only of the next five stitches. So if you can see right here, here's the single crochet. When we normally insert our hook, we insert it like that. But you can see there are two strands of yarn across there. So we're going to insert our hook under the back one, the one that is farthest away from us, single crochet into just that and leave the other part of the loop in the front untouched. So that was one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to work a regular single crochet into that last single crochet from the row below. And we're again going to ignore the, the skipped chain that was at the beginning of the first row. So that was our row two. And we're going to keep repeating that same row two until our ribbing is the final length that we want the circumference of our cowl to be. Now there's more than that to it. I'll explain that in just a minute but we're gonna keep repeating row two. So chain one, turn. We're gonna work a regular single crochet in the same stitch, and then single crochet into the back loop only of each of the next five stitches. And 
and then work a regular single crochet into that last single crochet. So what we are going to do to create this cowl with the ribbing on the edge is we're going to crochet this strip until it is quite long. We want it to be the length that we want the finished circumference of the cowl to be. And then we're going to sew the ends of that strip together, this end with what's going to be our finished end to make a loop or a strip of, of crochet with the end sewn together into a loop. And then what we're going to do is once we have that loop, we're going to start working around the top of it to make our cowl. And the stitch pattern that they're and the stitch pattern that we're going to be working around our, for our cowl is a multiple of six stitches. So that means that um, the stitch pattern repeat is six stitches wide. So what needs to happen here then is we need to make sure that even if you decide to make the cowl longer or shorter by adjusting how long you make this ribbing section, you always have to have a multiple of six rows. And that's because when we go to work around the top of the loop, we're going to be working into the end of each row, one stitch into the end of each row. So you're gonna to need to make sure that even if your strip is the correct length, you still need to go back and count to make sure that you have a multiple of six stitches. So basically the number of rows that you have, total number of rows, should be divisible by six. So just to give an example of that, let's say I did 240 rows of the ribbing. That would be divisible by six because you can divide it by six evenly into to six equal parts. So I'm going to continue working my ribbing until it is the correct length for the finished cowl and I have a number of rows that is a multiple of six. So I finished my ribbing all 138 rows of it. It's not actually, you know, that big of a deal or that time consuming because the rows are very, very short. So now what we're gonna do is take our starting tail that we had, you know, we had left about eight to 10 inches or so, and we're going to sew this end of the ribbing to the row of stitches that we just did, which is our 138th row. We're just gonna whip stitch that together, making sure that it's not twisted and it lays flat. So what we're gonna do is thread the tail onto this yarn needle. So I'm just going to bring these two edges together and because our, um, our ribbing was worked in the back loop only, as you can see right here, this is the same um, side of the row. This is the back side or the wrong side of this row. And on the wrong side of all the other rows that are currently facing, the, the loop that is, you know, on that back side is free because we worked into the opposite one, the back loop only. So what, what I'm, what I'm going to do is obviously this one right here is the beginning chain one. So I'm just going to whip stitch that together with the first chain from this side of our starting chain and then all the rest of the way across and then all the rest of the way across I'm only going to stitch through what would be in this case the front loop only because of the way I have it facing me but basically you just want to match the texture the rest of this so all the other rows that have this same side facing up right now have the row of loops on this side. So I'm gonna take the opposite loop, which would be the front loop only, from the way it is facing me. But if I just turn it around, actually what would be right side up, it's the back loop only. So I'm just gonna do it right side up and insert my needle into the back loop only as I whip stitch through there. So again, picking up the back loop only and the next foundation chain from the beginning of our ribbing and just stitching that together all the way across and this little seam will be basically completely invisible by the time we're done with this not only because we're matching 
the texture of the back loop only ribbing as we stitch this up, but also because this yarn has kind of a tonal variegated look to it so that it's not going to be real obvious where our seam was. So what I'm going to do here is just pull on this to make sure that it is, you know, seamed securely and tightly. Then I'm going to take that last stitch into the same place one more time and bring the yarn around the needle to make a knot when I pull it through. And we just want to make sure we're keeping that crocheting loop out of the way. We're just going to take this yarn tail, pull it out of the yarn needle and let it hang because we're going to crochet over it instead of weaving it in. So now we're going to start working the cowl part and this begins by single crocheting around the top edge of our ribbing here. So I'm going to insert my hook back into the loop that I had been crocheting with before. And before we begin this part, I just want to explain one thing. Normally, um, when you work in the round, if you're not working in a continuous spiral, if you're, you know, working individual rounds, joining it, then going up, working another round and joining it, we start with a turning chain and then we join with a slip stitch. I'm going to be using the chainless starting stitch and invisible slip stitch method to give a completely seamless look where you cannot even see the beginning and end of the round. I do have a separate video on chainless starting stitches and the invisible slip stitch if you want to go check that out before you do this part. But if you don't want to use a chainless starting stitch with an invisible slip stitch, then just remember any place that you see the abbreviation for the chainless starting double crochet in the pattern, you can replace that stitch with a chain three. And you can also replace the invisible slip stitch with a regular slip stitch if you want. I highly recommend the invisible method though, because it just gives a much more seamless look there is no turning chain ridge that goes up the, the center of the work. So that's what I'm going to be demonstrating here. But again, if you, if you don't want to do it that way, you can just do it the regular way and use a turning chain with a slip stitch. So this first row is a row of single crochet or a round of single crochet, I suppose. So I'm just going to stretch the loop on my hook just a little bit and insert my hook into the, the end of the next row and work a single crochet. So that is our chainless starting single crochet. So we just basically worked a single crochet with a stretched out loop instead of a turning chain. So now what I'm going to do is as I crochet over this tail, I'm just going to keep inserting my hook into the end of the next row from the ribbing and work a single crochet. As you can see, here's the next row. I'm going to insert my hook in there and work a single crochet. Insert into the next row, work a single crochet. So I'm just going to single crochet in the end of each row all the way around. And because we had 138 rows of ribbing, this round should finish with 138 stitches. Now, one more thing I do want to explain here. We are using this ribbing kind of as our foundation for the edge of our cowl instead of a foundation chain. So instead of working our first row of the main part into the chain or, or a foundation chain, we're working it into this ribbing. So if you want to make the cowl larger or smaller, the stitch pattern that we're going to be working in the upper portion of the cowl is a multiple of six stitches and because we're working in the round it's not six stitches plus x amount of edge stitches it's just six stitches so anything that is divisible by six you can use that number for you know how many stitches you want to be in your cowl just remember that to make it larger or smaller you're going to have to increase or decrease the length of the ribbing strip so if you want to make it larger you have to add rows in 
multiples of 6 or subtract rows in multiples of 6. So I did 138 rows in my ribbing, which is divisible by 6, and that will give me 138 stitches in circumference. But you can make it any size that you want as long as you make the ribbing, the number of rows in the ribbing, a multiple of 6. So I'm just going to continue single crocheting in the end of each of these rows all the way around until I get back to the beginning of the round and then I will show you how to do that invisible slip stitch. All right, so I have single crocheted all the way around at the top of my ribbing and now we're going to do our invisible slip stitch. This is not as hard as it sounds. Basically all we're gonna do is stretch the loop on our hook, take the hook out of that loop, and then as you can see right here is our first single crochet from the round that we're going to join into. So instead of inserting it normally into that first single crochet, we're going to insert the hook from back to front. First of all, you want to make sure that your working yarn is out of the way. So don't insert with the working yarn on top. Insert with the working yarn underneath your hook. Insert into that first stitch from back to front. Then bring that little loop over and loop it around your hook and pull it through from front to back. So that is our invisible slip stitch. It leaves the top edge of the row completely seamless and there is no turning chain at all. So you won't be able to see that either. So now we're gonna start working the dots and dashes stitch pattern. And so this is going to be our second row and we're going to start with a chainless starting double crochet. Now this isn't that hard either. Um, sometimes it does take a few tries to get it right if you have never done it before. But all we're going to do is stretch the loop out till it is about the height of a double crochet. We're going to hold on to the top of that with our index finger of the hand that's holding the hook. So just put your finger on top of that and then yarn over around. As you can see, I have two strands right there because that's a loop that goes around the hook. You're going to yarn over with that loop. So now we have the strand of yarn that we're holding plus the double strand of yarn over that we, you know, we went around the loop. I'll show you that again in case you missed it. We're just going to bring the tip of the hook towards us and then around behind the loop that is on our hook. Then we're going to insert it into the same stitch that our loop was coming out of, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through that first loop and that double strand loop that is on the hook, and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So that is going to make our chainless starting double crochet. So we did our chainless starting double crochet into the same stitch that our loop was coming from. Now we're going to repeat this little sequence for the rest of the row. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and work a regular double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch all the way around until there's only one stitch left in the row. All right, so I've made it back around to the last stitch of the row. So I'm going to chain one, skip that last stitch and work an invisible slip stitch in the top of that chainless starting double crochet. So I'm gonna stretch the loop, remove the hook, then insert my hook into that stitch from back to front, bring the loop around and catch it with my hook and then pull it through from front to back. So there is our second row. We have a double crochet chain one mesh basically. So now we're gonna work our third row. So to begin this row, what we wanna do is start in a chain space. So we're gonna slip stitch into the chain stitch of that chain space and we're going to work our chainless starting double crochet into the chain space. So again we're going to stretch the loop on the hook and put our index finger on top of that loop just to hang on to it. 
I'm going to yarn over with that loop, insert into the chain space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So there's our chainless starting double crochet. Then we're going to double crochet in the next four stitches. So into the next double crochet, that's one. Into the next chain space, that's two. Into the next double crochet, that's three. And then into the next chain space, that's our fourth double crochet. So we have this little block of five double crochet. Now we're going to go into the little sequence that we're going to repeat all the way around. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, which will always be a double crochet, and we're going to double crochet in the next five stitches. So into the chain space, into the next double crochet, into the next chain space, into the next double crochet, and into the next chain space. So that's our next block of five double crochet. So again, we're going to repeat that. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one, two, three, four, five stitches. So I'm going to keep repeating that little sequence of chain one, skip one, and then double crochet in the next five stitches all the way around till I get back to the beginning and I only have one stitch left in my round. All right, so I've made it back around. We're going to chain one, skip one, and then invisible slip stitch into the top of our chainless starting double crochet from the beginning of the row. So now what we're gonna do is row four, and row four is a repeat of row two. But the invisible slip stitch that we just worked and the stitch that it is worked into is the wrong one in the sense that we want the next row, what that is a repeat of row two, to line up the same way. So if I were to start doing a repeat of row two from right where my hook is right now, then the chain spaces from this row would not line up correctly with the chain spaces from the row I'm about to work or the ones from the row we just worked. So what we're gonna do is slip stitch backwards into the previous chain space. So to do this, I'm just going to bring my hook to my right. If you're a lefty, it would be to your left and insert into the chain space and then pull the loop through your slip stitch as normal, like so. So now we are back in the same column of stitches as our chainless starting double crochet from row two. So now we can repeat row two the same way that we worked it and it will line up correctly. So again, we're going to stretch the loop out, work our chainless starting double crochet into the same space. It's in a chain space this time, but it's the same space. We're going to chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch, and you get the idea. So we're going to continue repeating that little sequence till we get back to the beginning and we only have one stitch left in the round. All right, so that is our row four. And now we're going to work rounds five through eight, which are all rounds of plain double crochet. So to do this, I'm going to work my chainless starting double crochet in the same stitch that my loop is coming from. Like so. And just double crochet in each stitch around. And that includes, as always, both the double crochets and the chain spaces. So I'm just going to continue to double crochet in each stitch around until I get back to the beginning. All right, so I am down to the beginning of my round and I'm just going to work that invisible slip stitch into the top of my chainless starting double crochet from the beginning of the round. And so that is our row five or round five. So I'm just going to repeat that round three more times for round six, seven, and eight. All right, so I have finished rows five to eight. And now all we're gonna do is repeat 
rows two to eight two more times. All right, so I have finished repeating my rows two through eight two more times, and now we're just going to repeat rows two, three, and four one more time. All right, so I have finished my last repeat of rows two to four, and now we're going to work a round of single crochet so that we can work our ribbing into it. We're going to make another section of ribbing on the top edge to mirror what we did on the bottom edge. So we're going to work a round of single crochet. And to do this, we're just going to stretch the loop a little bit, single crochet in the same stitch that our loop is coming out of, and then single crochet in each stitch around until we get back to the beginning. All right, so we're back around to the beginning. We're just going to invisible slip stitch in the top of the first single crochet of the round, like so. So now we're going to work our ribbing, which is going to mirror the ribbing on the other edge of our cowl. And so to do this, we're going to work rows that are perpendicular to all the rounds that we just did. And we're going to be joining them to the cowl by slip stitching into these single crochets at the end of each row. So we're going to start our ribbing by chaining eight. We're going to skip the first stitch that, or the first chain and single crochet in the next seven chains. And again, as we work the ribbing, the beginning chain one that we skipped and the, um, the chain one turning chain from the, uh, the following rows are going to be ignored and not counted as stitches. So we will not be working into them, neither will we be counting them as stitches. So we now have seven single crochet. We are going to work a slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round, which is where our chain came out of. This is just a regular slip stitch, by the way. And that is the end of our first row. So what we're gonna do for the next row is we're gonna slip stitch into the next single crochet of our cowl and that's going to count as our turning chain, even though there's no chain there. So then we're going to turn the work and single crochet in the back loop only of the next six stitches. And then into our last stitch, we're going to work a regular single crochet through both loops of the stitch, and that will help stabilize our edge to make it so that it's not so incredibly stretchy that it's just all wavy and out of shape. So that's our second row. Now we're going to chain one and turn. We're not going to count that chain one as a stitch. So we're going to single crochet in the same stitch. Then we're going to single crochet in the back loop only of the next six. Like so. And then if we go back to the edge of our cowl, we're going to, as you can see, this was the last single crochet we slip stitched into. So we're going to slip stitch into the next single crochet of our cowl. And that will be the end of that row. So again, for the next row, we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch of the cowl. We're going to turn the work. We're going to single crochet into the back loop only of the next six stitches. And work a regular single crochet through both loops of that seventh stitch. And then we're going to chain one and turn the work. We're going to single crochet regularly in the same stitch and single crochet in the back loop only of the next six stitches. And then again, we're going to slip stitch in the next single crochet from our cowl edge and in the following single crochet 
before we turn and work the next row. So I'm just going to keep repeating those two rows until I get back around to where I started. So we're going to just keep going back and forth and creating our ribbing and attaching it as we go with those slip stitches all the way around the top edge of the cowl until we get back to where we started. All right, so I have worked my ribbing around the entire top edge of the cowl and now we just need to sew up this little bit right here. So I'm going to leave about an eight inch tail and cut my yarn. And then I'm going to tie off with my crochet hook. Don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to thread the tail onto my yarn needle. And just as we did before when we sewed up our ribbing, we're going to sew it together in the back loops only. So if the top of the row that we just did is facing me, I'm going to only be stitching through the back loop only. So I'm going to catch that first stitch and then come across here and catch the first stitch of the foundation chain. and make a stitch through there. I'm going to pick up the next stitch along with the next stitch of the foundation chain and just keep whip stitching that together until we get down to the end of our little seam. So here is our last stitch. As you can see, that is pretty much seamless and invisible. I mean, there is a seam, but it's it's pretty close to being invisible. It's not um, real obvious. So now we're just going to make a little knot by wrapping the yarn around the needle. And now we can just weave in this tail. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to post your photos to social media with the hashtag dots and dashes cowl so I can see your finished projects. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.